protecting critical infrastructure and cyberspace. And our work together with the with Indo-Pacific partners is vital for protecting the rules, rights, and norms that make us all safer. So I'm enormously proud of all the progress that NATO has made since we last came together. The Alliance faces, faces historic challenges, but we're meeting those challenges with confidence and above all, with unity. Make no mistake, we will not be drawn into Putin's war of choice but we will strengthen NATO's defense and deterrence. We will defend every inch of NATO territory, and we will continue to defend the open world of rules and rights that NATO has so proudly supported for nearly 75 years. So thank you very much, and I'll be glad to take a couple of questions. Thank you, Mr. Secretary. First question will go to Christopher Gordon, Air and Space Forces Magazine. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Secretary, in what ways would NATO's security be strengthened if Sweden uh, were to become a member of the alliance in the upcoming months? How specifically would such a development enhance the alliance's military and deterrence capabilities in the Nordic region and generally? Why is it important? And if Sweden is not admitted into the alliance soon, what specific steps will the U.S. take to safeguard Sweden's security in the meantime, would there be more military deployments, exercises, training, planning? Uh, what will the U.S. do to prepare the way for Sweden's eventual integration into NATO and protect in the meantime? And if I may ask a related question, sir, did you make any headway in your meeting with Turkey today uh, on winning support for Sweden's uh, accession into NATO? And can the uh, provision of F-16s to Turkey go ahead if Turkey does not agree to Sweden's accession into NATO? Hey, Chris, I, I, uh, I lost you on about the 10th question there, but, <laughs> but uh, we'll, uh, we'll try to catch up here. Uh, first of all, um, in terms of the value that Sweden brings to, uh, to NATO, as you know, Chris, Sweden is a strong democracy, and, it, and, it's, and it's a country with uh, a substantial military capability. Uh, they've invested over the years in modernization. Uh, we have trained with them uh, in a number of cases, and, and so uh, being interoperable on a, in a very short period of time it would be no challenge with, uh, with Sweden. And I was just in Sweden a couple of, couple of weeks ago, as you may know, uh, and I had the opportunity to spend some time with the, uh, with the Minister of Defense, and, uh, and also got a chance to look at some of their capabilities. Very impressed with the, the leadership in, the, in their military and, and, uh, and the enthusiasm and commitment of their troops. Uh, uh, so what they bring is, uh, again, substantial uh, military capability, a modern force, and they invested a lot in their force. Um, I was also impressed by their domain awareness, maritime domain awareness and, uh, and the uh, uh, awareness of what's going on in the, in the skies around them as well in, in the region. Uh, so they bring uh, that with, uh, uh, to, the, to NATO as well. It will enhance our ability uh, to, uh, to be aware of what's going on in the maritime and, and the aerial domains. Um, you ask about uh, increasing activity with, uh, with Sweden. We've done that already. We've increased the number of uh, exercises and, and uh, ship visits and a number of other things with Sweden. And so, uh, you know, I, I, think, uh, I think we've, made, we've continued to make progress uh, and, and increased our opportunities to, uh, to work towards greater interoperability. So very, uh, I think, very encouraging. Now, you mentioned my interaction with uh, my Turkish uh, colleague. Uh, you know, he's, uh, he's a brand new minister, recently installed. So my purpose in meeting him today was to uh, just, you know, an, an introductory meeting, just to congratulate him on being installed as Minister of Defense. And of course, you know, I seize every opportunity to encourage him to, uh, to move forward uh, and approve the uh, the accession of, uh, 
of Sweden. So, but it's a very short meeting, and uh, I don't have anything to report out from that from that encounter. So. Thank you, sir. Next question go to Politico EU, Lily. Thank you very much. I have two brief questions. The first is, what is your message to allies who still haven't made concrete plans on how to reach the 2% defense investment target, in particular Canada and Luxembourg? And my second question would be, there are reports that the U.S. is now in favor of waiving the membership action plan for Ukraine. Do you think that such a move would be sufficient to meet the expectations of all allies, including those allies who want a clearer path toward membership for Ukraine? at the Vilnius summit. Thank you. Yeah, in terms of the action plan, I'll let uh, uh, the Secretary General speak uh, uh, specifically about that. But, but um, I think we're at a point uh, in time where, you know, you've heard me say that we're confronting historic challenges uh, and so what we've learned over the last uh, many months as we've watched this uh, unprovoked uh, and illegal invasion of uh, Russia uh, into Ukraine, uh, what we've learned is that, you know, countries have to invest uh, in, their, in their defense. And I think, and I say we, I think we know that already and, and, and most everybody knows that already, but it became real as we saw this unfold. And so countries are leaning forward and, and, and more than willing to invest in, uh, in their defense. Uh, and as we uh, continue to discuss this, I think there is broad agreement that uh, the 2% investment, 2% of GDP investment should be a floor and not a ceiling. And, and, and there are many countries that uh, are anxious to exceed the 2%. Uh, and there are many countries that are on on the glide path to, uh, to get there in a reasonable amount of time. Uh, in terms of the specific countries that, are, that have not yet made it there, uh, I would defer to, uh, to them to talk about their, you know, their, their plan to get there. But you know, I see broad, uh, broad agreement that this is a, a goal uh, highly worth pursuing. So we'll continue to encourage our allies uh, to, uh, to meet that goal because it's really, really important. We have to continue to invest in weapons uh, and, uh, and munitions that, and, and replace the, the weapons and munitions that we provided to Ukraine in many cases. Uh, and and uh, it's going to take increased investment to make sure that we are where we need to be across the board uh, with NATO. We also have to standardize uh, munitions. Uh, we've learned a lot there as well. Uh, and, uh, and so our Armaments directors are working together to make sure that, you know, we, where possible, we're engaging in, uh, in uh, joint procurement activities. And, uh, and, and so a number of things that are really good things have transpired as a result of our efforts here. But a lot of that's taken place in the, under the, auspice of the auspices of the UDCG. So. Let's go to Ellie, CBS News. Thank you for doing this. Um, as you know, Secretary Blinken is traveling to Beijing this weekend, and one of his stated goals is to improve military communications. How would you describe the current mill-to-mill -mill communications with China, and have you reached out for a meeting with your counterpart since Singapore? Thank you. Well, well thanks, Ellie. Um, as you know, um, I have uh, I made an effort prior to going to Singapore and while at Singapore to uh, – uh, to engage my counterpart, and I'm confident that over time uh, that's going to happen. We're going to we're going to meet at some point in time, but we're not there yet. Not because we're not we didn't try to, uh, and we uh, that we won't continue to try. Uh, as you know, I was in Singapore a week and a half ago. I've been on the road uh, quite a bit, and uh, and so I've not uh, I've not reached out since. But again, the door is open, and uh, my phone is uh, my phone line is open. And so uh, they can pick up the phone and call at any time, and uh, we'll continue to work to make sure that we uh, we have open lines of communication. Ellie, you've you've heard me say a number of times. Uh, I think it's important that countries uh, with uh, significant military capacity and capabilities uh, have the means to talk uh, to each other, so that we can uh, we can manage uh, potential crises and and. Uh, you know, make sure that, you know, 
things are, aren't allowed to unnecessarily spiral out of control. Um, you know, we the kind of relationship that we want to have with China is is a is one of competition and not a, not one of contention. So we'll continue to work to make sure that uh, where po where and when possible, you know, we uh, we uh, open those lines of communication. We have time for one more question. Let's go to Elena from Sespilne, Ukraine. Um, Secretary Austin, thank you very much. Um, first of all, uh, recently it was the information that appeared in the New York Times and several in other American media that the uh, U.S. may offer Ukraine some so-called Israeli security model. Um, can you explain in more detail what exactly does it mean and uh, do you think it is a viable idea and uh, it will be available for Ukraine as some kind of uh, security guarantees? Although I guess you know that it's not uh, the same security guarantees as uh, the Ukrainians I would like to receive. Uh, thanks, Elena. I, uh, you know, I won't speak to any type of security uh, uh, arrangement uh, at, at this point in time. What I've been focused on, what I remain focused on, is making sure that we're providing Ukraine the security assistance that it needs to be successful uh, in this fight, Elena. And it's, uh, it's really important that we and, uh, and our partners that are fighting the fight remain focused on this uh, and, uh, and you know, we'll have a uh, uh, bilateral relationship with, uh, with Ukraine uh, going forward, as you would imagine. Uh, that's, uh, you know, that, uh, the people who will hammer out those kinds of arrangements are, are talking to each other. But, uh, but again, my focus remains on making sure we get the right kinds of sec security assistance to Ukraine so they can be successful. Uh, and I think this is a really critical time on, uh, in uh, point in time on the battlefield. So. But, but thanks for the question. Thank you, Mr. Secretary. Ladies and gentlemen, that's all the time we have for today. Thank you for coming.